All right, so it is I again, Joshua Gray, Husky Head for the Fair Fitness Model. And I'm back yet again with another book club meeting. This is about, this is chapter four. This is the fourth meeting. Uh, chapter three was good. And somebody even stopped through. Um, if anybody come through, just to, I'm going to stop and make sure I greet them. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, chapter four was entitled "The History of Taxes and the Power of the Power of Corporations." If I'm not mistaken, always go too far. Excuse me. I know it's late, and maybe the time has something to do with people not being here. But whatever, the show must go on. So yes, lesson four, the history of taxes and the power of corporations. So what I did, if you watched the summary, you already know some of the things we're talking about. So I formulated some questions. First question is, do you know the gist of the Robin Hood tale? The gist of the tale is Robin Hood was this thief or a petty thief, but eventually he wanted to score big. And he, his motive was to give from the rich Take from the rich and give to the poor. Now, follow-up question. Would you say Robin Hood were a socialist or a capitalist? I would definitely say Robin Hood was a socialist. Um, because he was looking out for everybody. He was basically, he was playing the fence of being the government's do boy. Sounds bad, but it's the truth. Um, what do you identify with or desire to identify? Me personally, I would say growing up, I was so, I was super socialist in my beliefs. Um, but I also attribute that to not knowing better and being raised to kind of have that, oh man, woe is me and the government. The go if you hear it so much from how you were raised, you're probably going to mimic it in some of your uh, vocabulary and some of your statements. So. Um, yeah, I can say I grew up a socialist, but uh, in reading this book and learning over these past few years, I was trying to be more independent as a businessman and uh, really navigating this business world. Um, capitalist, I said in one of the v previous videos, capitalist is, I would desire to be that um, because it means that I'm taking care of my family and those generations to come after me. So. Uh, I want to win. I want to be on top. I'm not saying that in like a gloating or like I'm in comfort. I'm just saying I want to be the best version of Joshua and not worry about some of the mundane, some of the petty things that the poor middle class have to worry about. Um, that's just point blank period. Uh, forgive me if it sounds shallow, but that's not my intention. It's just I'm just being honest, transparent. So um, but in this, it tells, um, uh, Robert starts talking about the taxes and, um, pretty much the history of taxes, it asks, which class of people did taxes target? The taxes initially was targeting the rich class. That's the answer. The taxes did target the rich class. But the rich class, that meant it had to be a government in place. And once, he, he used this quote, once government got a taste of money, its appetite grew. It was blood in the water, simple as that. The government became um, fighting pit bulls, to say the least, to those who can relate. Once they have a taste of blood, it's like, uh-oh, you done just created a beast. And... So then I asked the question, do you know what a corporation is? So I'm gonna give you the exact definition. A corporation is a legal document that creates a legal body without a soul. It's not a building, a factory, or a group of people using it. Using it, the wealth of the rich is protected. So pretty much, when you, usually I say, when I heard the word corporation, I used to always think, like, oh man, this is like a big business but it's just documentation 
It's legal documentation, bro, to keep your assets set so nobody is touching your money. So you try and sue some of these corporations, they're protected by the legal documentation. That's why people are saying, hey, go out and get an LLC. Protect your assets. Company-wise, okay, you got to take that money, but as long as you're fine and your personal assets are intact, um, next question was, do you know what a 1031 is? So 1031 is, the definition is jargon for section 1031 of the Internal Revenue Code, which allows a seller to delay paying taxes on a piece of real estate that is sold for a capital gain through an exchange for a more expensive piece of real estate. So I guess if you sell real estate, what I'm getting from this, you sell real estate, to get like this gain, but you immediately go and hurt, exchange that money for a more expensive piece of real estate, um, then you don't have to pay tax, it delays the paying of the taxes. Um, but that is how you make more money, which was discussed in this chapter because you're buying up, but you're saving more and paying less in taxes if you was to just liquidate it from, from off the rip. So. That's pretty smart. And that was the tactic that um, that the rich class kind of adopted and used. They used corporations and things like 1031s. Um, okay, but we're going to keep moving, keep it pushing. What do you think the poor and middle class do when presented with financial governmental discomfort? So what I'm saying is, if the government does something that the poor middle class doesn't like, what happens? In my experience, all I see is a bunch of complaining, a bunch of, oh man, why they do that? Like right now, you know, it's, it's stimulus time and it took these folks this long to vote on this and it's, oh my God, oh my God. But, you know, I'm affected by it. A lot of people are, and I'm not trying to, you know, judge anyone, but if we was more financially literate and had a financial aptitude to just be up there, we would have expenses to kind of like carry us up. We wouldn't be worried about this. Like it is tough on the poor middle class and I consider myself in that class. So, um, but do I fault, I fault myself for not seeking that information or seeking this information earlier. So hey, it is what it is. What do the rich do? Now, this is important. The rich is like, it's like your, your, the rich in these situations, they don't, they don't sit there and soak. They find ways to protect their money, their personal assets. That's why they get those, um, that's why they get those corporations started and those, um, 1031s because hey I'm going to find a way I don't care what the government does but I want to be able to withstand whatever happens and if you telling me that's the mind of a capitalist I think we all should be a little bit of capitalistic and to be honest that's where if you're watching this and you're in America that's pretty much society bro it's capitalistic bro so don't get mad at the game learn how to play the game and play the game smarter. Stop working so hard. And this was this was a great question, but it says, how long do Americans work for the government in the name of taxes? In this book, in this chapter, as I should say, he sums it up, Robert Kiyosaki sums it up to say that average Americans, I'm reading it verbatim, today work four to five months for the government just to cover their taxes. Like at the end of the year, once taxes are all taken out and you factor it all in, it's probably adding up to about four or five months of taxes coming out your paycheck. Like, and that amount equates to about four or five months of real work. And you're like, oh my God. So you telling me technically I only work eight months out of the year. We know if you ain't got dependents and all these other deductions, 
you ain't getting back too much. The government just taking it like, hey, appreciate it, partner. Um, he also stated, people who lose are the ones who are uninformed. Yes, knowledge is power. And if we don't have the knowledge, we lose because we don't know how to combat some of these taxations and uh, some of these some of these unjust rules of society or government. Um, not saying I totally hate government. Government has its pros and cons, but you must know how to maneuver because if not, it's like you're getting bullied, man. Um, so it leads me to say, when it came to government, who fought back? Was it the poor dad or the rich dad? Robert says, my poor dad never fought back. My rich dad didn't either. He just played the game smarter and he did it through corporation. That's what I'm saying. It's all a game, baby. It's a game. I feel like we look. We should look at life as a big game of Monopoly. And how do you play this game of Monopoly? Like, Monopoly is a fun game. I remember working with some kids and shoot, some of us you know what I'm saying? Some of the, of the uh, councils will be playing Monopoly with the kids and just getting money. And that's how you got to think about life. It's it's really a game and you got to know how to play it. But you need to have a financial IQ to help you play that game. He wanted, he, Robert says that Rich Dad wanted us to be financially smart and not let anyone or anything push us around, even government. If you're ignorant, it's easy to be bullied. Facts. If you know what you're talking about, you have a fighting chance. Be smart and you won't be pushed around as much. Don't get me wrong. The government is a bad mother shut your mouth. And they gonna push and they gonna tug, but you gotta be ready to try and withstand it or at least try and fight back somehow. But that's where he introduces the financial IQ. What's the financial IQ? He says, I must remind people that the financial IQ is made up of knowledge from four broad areas of expertise. You need to know accounting. Accounting is financial literacy or the ability to read numbers. This is a vital skill if you want to build an empire. The more you are responsible for it, the more accuracy is required, or the house comes tumbling down. This is the left brain side or the details. Financial literacy is the ability to read and understand financial statements, which allows us, allows you to identify the strengths and weaknesses of any business. Investing, number two is investing. Investing is the science of money making, money making money. This involves strategies and formulas that use the creative right brain side. Number three was understanding the markets. Understanding markets is the science of supply and demand. You need to know the technical aspects of the market, which are emotion driven, in addition to the fundamental or economic aspects of an investment. Does an investment make sense or does it not make sense based on current market conditions? Number four, you need to know the law. And it's okay with the law. It's okay to have lawyer friends or somebody that you consult with, but you gotta know some of this stuff. You gotta kind of pick their brains to know what's that and actually do the research yourself. I talked to a friend earlier. And he was saying, yeah, I wanna you know, do this, but I need to do, yeah, it's always great to do the research yourself. Don't go off just somebody's word. It's good to have somebody's word, but you must, you gotta protect yourself at all costs. Self-preservation, first rule. Um, but the law, a corporation wrapped around the technical skills of accounting, investing, and markets can contribute to explosive growth. A person who understands the tax advantages and perceptions provided by a corporation can get rich so much faster than someone who's an employee or a small business sole proprietor. It's like the difference between someone walking and someone flying. The difference is profound when it comes to long-term wealth. And it's very, he gives some more breakdowns of like the advantages of knowing the law. So in summary, I did want to end with this. It kind of breaks down like how business owners with corporations spend and how employees who work for corporations spend. Business owners with corporations spend. They earn the money, they spend the money, then they pay taxes. So they get the money, right? They earn this money. Say you earn 150000 
they go and spend a hundred thousand of it. Then number three, the fifty thousand is left over. That's what's getting taxed. Employees who work for corporations, they earn it, they pay taxes, then they spend. So me, regular Joe Schmo, go to work, get that gross income. You see that gross? You're like, yeah. Then I see them taxes come out, and I'm like, God, Lee, gotta pay them taxes. Then I'm. I gotta spend after that. So I'm I'm getting worked by the government. And it's basically like saying, hey, you better make do with what you have left over. So you telling me you don't wanna get into learning about corporations? You'll be an idiot to not even think about starting a corporation. And to those that's already on it, thank y'all. Thank y'all. I wish I would have thought about it sooner. But it's never too late, and the grind don't never stop. So that was the pretty much the conclusion of Book Club. Make sure I ain't got nothing else that I wanted to say. Welcome to my book club. Husky FE. Oh, I had this one question. It was uh, the additional questions at the back. It said, are the rich? right to use advantages of corporations to avoid paying taxes do you think more people could follow suit if they understood the system straight up if people knew better they would probably well no nah, can't say that um it will be more people to um jump on board it has been over these at least from the circle that i kind of monitor it has been a lot of people that uh been catching on to this whole corporation ordeal um are the rich right to use the advantage, yes, they're right. And that's where it's like, sometimes I see the flaw in like school and financial illiteracy. When you, If you was to teach literacy more, people would kind of be smarter to know like, uh, corporations help. Um, and the rich, most of them who, they'll probably tell you a story like, I dropped out, like um, Rich Dad, he dropped out in eighth grade, but I don't fault them for being smart and thinking with their brain. Right now, a lot of us is we aren't thinking with our brains because our brains are so tied up into you got it, good old, good old phone. So, um, whose fault is that? Um, it's our fault, the consumer, because we bought that phone, we over consume this phone, so, so we over consume social media. We stop using this, when we stop using this, we get a we're getting a we're getting a good snapshot of. Uh, when we stop using this, what the big wig is going to come through and do. Um, so with that, that's it, man. That's all I got for book club meeting four. Um, hey, we still rocking and rolling. Chapter five is a deep chapter. Uh, let's see. Yeah, chapter five is a deep chapter. Like I said, I got the, that much. It makes sense, but um, this is how much we've done. We're about halfway done. This is how much we've done. This is how much is left. Well, about half, about halfway. Let's see, 174. Total pages in the book is about, final thoughts is 340, 352. So we're about halfway done. Um, so we're going to keep grinding. Hope to see y'all tomorrow. Uh, chapter 5 on the way. Chapter 6 as well. I don't know if both going to get done tomorrow, but who knows? Uh, put out three videos today. So um, I love y'all for watching this. If y'all do watch this, if y'all don't, I understand you're busy. But when it happens for me, don't don't say it happened overnight. It, nothing happens overnight. So just remember, I put it out there. It's on y'all to go and look at it. Um, and always remember, if I read, you read, and we read, then we can make the world a better place. I'll stop reading, man. I'm out. Hefe.